okay yesterday we discuss about forms right like we go and uh, we discuss all the controls inside a form and uh, <clears throat> inside the forms we discuss about different different kind of control like text box radio button and uh, drop down uh, list box file upload texture etc but last part we uh, like we discuss about this button okay this button means we have three type of button one is reset click and submit after we discuss like reset is uh, used to reset the form data and click is simply a normal javascript button like if you want to do any client side operation you have to use the click then we'll discuss about this summit. Now, before going for summit, we have to understand the architecture of a client side programming. Okay. Let's go and discuss about how a server and client will work. If anyone any question in between that, you can ask me. Okay. Let me start. Suppose this is your application. Okay. Today's, today's session will be a little bit technical. Just try to understand all these things. First, imagine this is your application and this is your server. Let me write it down. This is your application and this is your server. Why application? Why server? Because <clears throat> application means whatever the user is going to interact this screen we can call as the application and the data whatever you're going to send from this this client client means application from application to your server then we call it a client client application okay means your application is a screen where actually user going to interact but all the interaction data will come from the server server is used to store the data like suppose you want to suppose like your college suppose college has your information about uh, your roll number name and stream and this all these things right so data they are storing in inside a inside a area that we call as a server means server is a uh, area where you are, you are going to store the data in application when you want to send the data from your application to server okay suppose you want to send data from your application to server or you want to receive data from server to application that is two way either you can send the data either you can send the data to server otherwise you will receive the data to server this is whole combination of sending data and receiving data we called as a web application means if you go any application development, it may be web, mobile, TV, everything. The only th the basic princip principle is you have to send the data and you have to receive the data everywhere, all the application. But when you send the data from your application, means from client, from client to if you are going to send the data to server, then in that case, we have a we have there is some technical design in this case where you want to going to send the data from client to server means if you want to send the data from your client side to server then there is a specific technology is used to send the data from your app client to server this technology we can call as http hypertext transfer protocol for that reason if you open any of the site you know that we are using HTTP means you are using this HTTP protocol protocol means it's a rules HTTP protocols to send the data from client to server <clears throat> what are the different kind of protocol you, you can use the FTP file transfer protocol suppose you want to upload a file you want to use you want to download a file for that reason you have to use the FTP HTTP is a protocol we can use to send the data and receive the data from the server. <clears throat> Always remember, for that reason, we are all the side we are using HTTP or HTTPS. S means just a secure layer, but the HTTP means hypertext transfer protocol. Means using this protocol, you are going to send and receive the data from your application. 
clear you have to know the basic of http means hypertext or hypertext transfer protocol okay. using this protocol you need to transfer or receive the data in web for that reason each and every site we have a http you have to use right you clear it why the use of http means the way you want to transfer the data in the web application you need a http protocol for that reason we are using http if you are using https simple as the is secure since you are using ssl okay http just additional security layer is https hypertext transfer protocol secure okay ft means file transfer protocol file transfer protocol today you have to know today we are going to discuss on this http means the first point is http is used to send and receive the data from the server okay simple one but when you are sending the data to a server you cannot send the directly like suppose you are sending some courier right you are using some courier company like suppose blue dot or something you are using right suppose in that case also if you are using also our government um, post office also, right the same way when because if you want to send something from your client to server we are using the http but how we are going to transfer it to transfer the data from client side to server side we call as http method means http protocol is used to transfer and receive the data but to, but to send the data from the server we have to use http method means there is a method using this method you can transfer the data don't be confused http is a protocol is used to send the data by in web to transfer data in web we have to use http but http method means how we are going to send the data to server okay to send the data to server in stl there is two way you can send it one is get another one is post you have to understand this, this this two concept this two concept is common for all the language if you are working in java dot net uh, or you are working in psp <coughs> react angular everywhere you have to know the basic of a get and post we call it a http method HTTP means hypertext transfer protocol. Any data you want to access in web browser or any data you want to access in web, you have to use the HTTP protocol. In HTTP protocol, if you want to send the data to server, then you have to use HTTP method. HTTP method means the communication way, how we are going to communication. Like suppose I want to save something, I can message you, I can call you, I can WhatsApp you, I can do anything, right? the different different medium of data how we are transferring that is called the http method i can in http you can pass in get or post okay there is all other others are there i'll go to explain later but basic you have to understand the get and post this is the two method we are going to use to send the data from client side to server side clear you you got it what is http and what is the http method http if you are going to transfer or receive a value in the web web means an internet then you have to use the http okay in http how we are going to send the data to the server that is a, we call a http method http method means you how we are going to send the data from client side to server side okay because it's not going to direct send it for that reason we need a specific technology for the specific technology we can use http method http method is two types one is a get and post okay then we will go we will discuss what is get and what is post get means if the get means if you are using any can let me open the google one okay i have a google i have a enter google and let me enter suppose hello world You can see after typing hello world it's going to the server right now if, if i check this google.com what have https www.google.com search question mark q equal to hello world means if you are pass the data 
to server using get means you have to pass via query string you have to understand the what is query string in the url if anything start from question mark we call as query string okay means this data is going to display here query string okay you have to understand basic concept of a query string and uh, get and post in case of a get if you are passing the data to the server then the whatever url you are going to send to the server because server has an address right suppose you are google you want to create your own server whatever each and every server has its address right if you send the data to the server in form of get then you have to pass via query string get means it will be query string the query string name equal to value okay means you have to pass query string name equal to value here the query is query string name and value is hello world if i go and change it here to hello world 2 you can see that it is displaying hello world 2 means what i'm trying to say it here in case of a get method you will pass the data to the server in query string format and if you want to pass multiple query string, you can use the and and you can pass the suppose, query string name to equal to value. This is the basic of a HTTP method. If you want to pass the data to the server in case of get, you need to pass in address param. Address param means suppose this is, suppose just example you are creating one API, backend API, just an example backend API. It will be HTTP and your domain name dot com then suppose employee emp um, details emp details then query string id equal to one two three got it this is one kind of get example you got the get example suppose you want to get the employee information if you want to get a employee information in case of a get what will do you need to pass the data of employee by a query string this is called get method okay this is the basic of get means you want to pass the data in get okay get means whatever data you want to pass to the server it should be go as a query string you have to know this is called query string because after question mark everything you want to go write like query string name and value server will treat as a query string whereas if you are using post okay if you are using post so you want to go to pass the data to the server but it will go as a hidden hidden means you have to understand the request thing because okay guys this is a little bit uh, like um, technical you have to understand the concept of a payload what is payload you have to understand if you want to send some data from client side to server side you want to send some data right suppose you are designing one login form you have text you have email id and you have password and you have to click on submit then what will happen you need to you need to get this username and the password when you click on submit you have to combine this username password and send to the server and server will get the value and get the data and you will give you response right to send the data here you, you have username and password right but you cannot pass the username password and query string just imagine why you cannot pass because it's a sensitive information right you cannot pass username equal to user equal to admin and password equal to one two three you cannot pass like this way right because if you pass the query string then anyone can able to read it right in the query string but whereas if you are going to use the post then you can send the data to the server but instead of passing in query string you will pass in a body now the question is coming what is a body means each and every request let me open another anyone any question just let me know because this is just technical i know if few of you know the server side architecture and server side how it's working some of you don't know like what how the server is work you have to understand this all these things I think get you got it get means you need to pass the server data to pass the server to a data using this query param but whereas if you want to pass the data in form of post then you have to pass in body or you can, you can call as request body request body or we can call as payload always remember if you go in separate company in future if someone going okay send in payload 
send any request body send something you have to know that they are talking about the post one if anyone call, call like okay just send this in pay, payload payload means the data in a request just example in a request suppose this is a request just a second this is a request which is going to server okay in the request going to server in case of post in case of post you are not going to pass directly what will do you will create a bucket okay you will create a bucket and inside this bucket you have to pass the data this bucket this bucket we call as a this bucket we call as a payload or request body means when you post it instead of passing to the data server in query string means query string means in address bar what will do it will create a payload means it a bucket and this bucket is that go to the server this is called as a request payload means what is the difference between get and post in get if you want to pass the data to server then you have to use the case of you have to use the concept of id means concept of query string whereas if you are going to use the concept of a post then you have to pass the data in payload or body or request body now you will ask how you can pass that that how we are going to, going to pass it pass that that is the best on a different different program it is going to different different okay but then the main difference between get and post if you want to create a sensitive form like suppose you are creating a form this kind of form right this form contains this much um, control if i am to submit what will do you need to pass this data in form of post whereas in some of the scenario you want to display the employee information you want to get check the details that case you have to use the get if your data does not contain any sensitive information and that time you have to use the get get means only get the data but the post is used to do some operation to the data like suppose you have to insert update delete in that case you have to use the concept of post but in the case you want to get the data from server you have to use the get that is the two way you are using one is get paste uh, post get means from get you want to get the data post means you want to get the data otherwise you have to execute some logic then you have to use the post for that reason yesterday we have discussed the concept of this just a second we have concept of this submit when you submit a form then you have to specify that how you are send the data to the this submit you want to send data in get or you want to send data in post for that reason what we will do After we discuss this text, then reset, click, submit. In submit, whenever you are going to click on this submit, what will happen? You have to submit, then you have to specify where you need to submit and what is the method of the submit. As I discussed, to define the method, you have to use the method attribute in form. It will be either get or post. Let me define get. If I call as get and define the name it here, suppose uh, name, name as uh, EMP ID. Okay, let me expand this one. Let me add it. Suppose employee ID is 1, 2, 3. If I click on submit, can you see it, guys? What is happening? Automatically, question mark EMP ID equal to 1, 2, 3. Okay. If I click, if I write it, what, whatever it will write. Okay, if I click submit, you can see that it's coming EMP ID to 123. Why, why it's happening, why it's coming like? In form, I have mentioned the method as get. When you, as I explained, if you, met, if you mention the method as get, then automatically the data will go as a query string format. Example, let me copy an, another one, suppose another text box. Rename as suppose the employee ID and it will be age, just example age. Okay, let me refresh. 
I have two text box. One is employee ID, another one is age. If I click on submit, you can see that I have two parameter here. One is question after question mark, EMP ID equal one two three and age equal to eighteen. So what is the difference between these two? Why the what is the use of a get and a get? If you are using get, whatever form value inside this, then it will going to display you as a query string. Okay. Let show you one example. What I'll do in the form if I enter suppose hello world if I click on submit what will happen it will go to Google and search it okay for that reason you have to know the understanding the how it's working if I told you like I have to go to Google and I have to paste this one right my URL will be this one google.com search and query equal to hello world right how are you going to do that is the example for that if i don't like if i click on submit the action is going to same form only you can see that if i click on the any of the places and click on submit my action is going to same page only but all the time it's not possible to you have to send that request to same page suppose you want to if i click you want to send the request to another page okay in that case what we have we are called action action means you have to specify when i click on this submit to which page the action going to fire you got my point method means you have to specify which method attached would be transfer but in case of action you have to specify that in which page this action going to be fire just an example if i mention it here abc.com Okay. Okay. okay suppose uh, i let me mention abc.com okay they save it if i refresh and click on submit this you can see sorry let me okay sorry http We have another form, sorry, we have another form called form2.html, right? What I'll do, if someone is going to click it here, I'm going to open form2.html. Means, if I click it here, the request is going to, request will go to this form2 page. For that reason, if I click it here, you can see that it's opening form2 page. Means, in case of action, you have to specify in case of action you have to specify which form you want to perform the action means whenever I click on submit the form will check that what is the action one if you don't specify the action it will treat as the same page if you specify any of the action then this request will goes to that page I give an example as I told if I click on search here, let me rename this to search. If I search it here, and if I click on search, whatever I will enter in this page here, the automatically Google will open and it will go into search. How can I do that? For that reason, what I will do, instead of writing form to the HTML, I will write this entire one. Okay. And instead of this, this one, I will write this one Q. Okay, let me save it. Once I save it, if I refresh, if I write it here, suppose I will write it here, um, hello world. We click on search, you can see that it's working. Means in the action, whatever path or whatever you are going to specify, the request, the whatever form request is going to this particular action. Action means the path of the action where you want to execute method means in which area like what is what are the type of data you want to send you want to send the gate or you want to send the post okay this is the two things you have to understand always clear about this method and action let me repeat it again method means how you want to transport the data action means where you want to transport the data let me write it down in form it means sorry 
method means how to transfer the data and action means where to transfer the data here right method means how you can transfer the data action means where to transfer the data for that reason you can see that if you open any site if you saw something and click on it navigate to google right they have written this kind of code it's up to you how you can do that okay now now we'll go for the post one okay let me remove this one instead of get i'll use post okay. let me enter something and search it did you see any changes okay let me remove everything here let me enter hello world and search it did you see any changes here but form is posting but you are not able to see the data okay actually this post part post part you can only achieve when you are doing any kind of real programming means we cannot access the post data because as i told post always send the data in body means in the payload no one is going to see the data only the request able to see the data for that reason if you are using get you can see the data via query string but in case of post in case of post you cannot see the data we are sending we are sending the data but the things will be we cannot see the data it's always go to the request payload if anyone uh, like learning java or anyone learning c uh, like uh, dot net all these things that time you will know the concept of post and get how you can access the post and get data but for a ui designer you have to know for a basic of a get and post get is used to transfer the data in form of query string whereas post is transfer the data to the server in form of body or payload okay this is all about a form but as i told it here if i click it here what happening like whatever i uh, like enter right is automatically displaying all here right this is the default functionality of a browser if you enter anything and post it and then auto, what will happen it's automatically going to store in the autocomplete but some of the time the autocomplete is not required right it is not required suppose you don't want want autocomplete here you know what will happen what will do there is a <clears throat> syntax you can call it autocomplete autocomplete and it will be off the value will be off if you refresh and do that They click it here you can see that if nothing is coming autocomplete off means if you want to off the autocomplete of a text box then you have to use the autocomplete of attribute okay all you need to note it yet autocomplete attribute is optional if you don't put it here and save it replace what will happen it will go to display right if i go and put the autocomplete one and refresh you are not going to be able to see the autocomplete okay this is the basic of a text box then let me summarize what we learn as 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 for a form in form we have learned text box right we have learned text box text box will be like single line password then text area multi line okay then we have learn drop down drop down will be single or multi select what we learn we will learn five we learn radio and check box then we have learn file upload and finally learn buttons one will be reset button and submit and finally 
the combine combination of all these thing we have learned form right means in html we have this kind of predefined controls exist text box to enter the data drop down select the data radio and check box choose the data file for upload the data button for submit the data these are the basic control in html means using this one two three four five five type of control means it's almost five or six uh, seven or eight controls using this all this control you can able to design a web application i'm talking web application not web designing web application means if you know all this control you can design this kind of form right we have learned text box we have learned this drop down we have done this text area we have learned the button and other control we are not using that's fine but if you, if i'll give you one form to design all these things then you can able to design using this control right this is all about the html form as of now we have learned like basic of html how we are going to add the html all these things and final one the form let's go and learn about the basic of a html like what are the basic um, html uh, rules not the basic html syntax you have to know okay from tomorrow onwards we are going to start with html uh, we are going to start with the css then we will start with uh, today we are going to complete the html and tomorrow we are going to start with the css okay let's go let's go start with a basic syntax whatever you want to know in html okay let's go and start with that to start html we are using html and you have html end Before that, if I open any of the site, let me open and go to view source. You can see that there is a syntax is written here. HTML type doc type equal to HTML. Okay. Let me go to indent into HTML. Every site you open, let me open Amazon site. Okay. Just for, for your information, let me open the Amazon site. We will go to view source. You can see it's written doc type equal to html okay then what is this doc type okay always remember if you are going to write any html file then you have to mention the doc type syntax you have to write what is this doc type syntax as you know what what is the current version of html we are using anyone can give the answer what is the current version HTML of HTML? 5. Yeah, perfect. HTML 5. Yes, yes. Means, HTML 5 means, you know already that there is different, different kind of HTML we have, like HTML 4, HTML, because when in initially HTML design, that time, that is HTML 1, then HTML 2, HTML 4, then HTML 5, now HTML 5 point one point something, in, in future, maybe HTML 6 will come, right? Now you will going to ask me if all this thing is there, means HTML, all these things are there, is there any difference between the tag? Okay. As I told you, whatever I have a learn new as of now, the all this H1, H2, form, input, drop down, etc. These are the basic of a HTML. Means if you work on HTML4 or if you work on HTML5, then all are basic. Then you ask me a question, what's new in HTML5? Before going into HTML5, let you know that this is a basic principle writing HTML5. Before writing HTML5, you have to mention to the browser. If you write document type HTML, HTML means, if you mention HTML equal to 4.0 or 4 or 2, then what will happen? The browser will understand whatever syntax you are writing inside this HTML, that syntax is a HTML4 syntax. 
and if you write the html5 it's an html5 syntax means doc type html means you have to let the browser know that which version html you are using that is the use of doc type means document type what is the use of document type document type use means you have to specify to the <coughs> browser what is the html version you are going to use in this html file in, in this html file if you don't mention any html then what will happen the browser will treat as you are using the latest html syntax okay what is latest html syntax means are using the html 5 syntax but that is also dependable upon the browser if your browser supporting html5 then it is going to show the html5 if a browser supporting html4 then it will showing the html4 but nowadays all the major browser including chrome firefox and edge at least all these three all people are using right these browsers are using html5 for that reason we don't need to mention what is the html you have to use okay means if you are going to mention doc type of html by default browser know that we are using the document type as html actually no i know that this is the initial syntax but i have did not mention this one from initial days got it what is doc type doc type means what is the html version you are using in HT, in your uh, this web page okay then we have mentioned body Okay, I mentioned body. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I mentioned head. I mentioned head. Discuss title. Let me title suppose uh, basic of HTML. We have body. Let me save it and save as HTML. I suppose uh, all dot HTML. All dot HTML. <clears throat> In this, we are going to discuss the basic of HTML. Initial days, I told how to add this kind of menu, this kind of icon. Because if you don't add icon, browser is going to display a default icon. What about the browser you describe this icon will be different in different different browser let me go and add this kind of uh, like this fab icon in your browser let me go and see what is the fab icon they are using let me just a second what is the fab icon icon is not here just a second forgot we'll copy from google no one okay let me download one free icon okay Let me add icon. Okay. okay, you can use any icon. The second we are using this icon. Icon, we are go for last one, 24 pixel one. I'm going to download. Okay. Let me copy this icon. And paste it inside these images. Market have icon. 
with the extension of this icon it's dot png okay let me show you how we can add the fab icon in the website as i explained head tag will consist of the icon to add an icon you have to use the concept of link okay uh, this link i'll going to explain all this thing in, in uh, css let me add the icon first link relation equal to icon relation equal to icon and href equal to let me mention the path images slash tab icon dot png you see it you guys let's convert the basic to this one okay let me explain one this thing link tag link tag from this tag you know that something is linking right link tag means something the HTML is going to link relation what is the relation of this link it's an icon relation okay the relation will be changed based on different that we're going to explain later just imagine link means what you want to link relation means what is the type of link href means the path of the link you got it in the link i have mentioned relation equal to icon icon means it will treat as a our fab icon then href i will specify the file what is the icon of this uh, what is the icon of this fab one means what is the image of this fab one if i add this link one and save it and refresh you can able to see that i can able to see this icon symbol here all clear about this link one Okay, I will explain all these things. What are the different different type of a relation? Link means linking, RL means relation, HRF means path. Means you want to link a icon from this source. What it is a clear one? Link, RL, HRF. Okay, using this link, you can able to link a icon. <clears throat> Got it? <clears throat> Let me explain what why we are using this link. In HTML, if you want to add any kind of linking from your internal or external, I'll I'll talk about what is internal, what is external in the latter chapter. But let me explain. Link tag means you want to link something. What do you want to link? That specify in RL. RL stands for relation. Okay, R E L means relation. What I'm trying to link it here, I am trying to link here an icon. Icon means it's a fab icon. Okay, means favorite icon. Previously, we are talk, talking as fab icon. Now it's a icon. Then next one is href. Href in hyper reference. Means for this for this relationship of an icon, what is the path for this link? Means for this icon, what are the icon path? Then href you have to specify the icon path. Then what will happen? Whenever you pass this icon, then it automatically the icon is going to display here. You clear, you clear it? Clear, right? Uh, drop down function. Okay, okay. This function, all the function we are going to... Uh, uh, this function we are going to cover in uh, in JavaScript only because um, that that time only we are going to understand what are the different, different type of function but pure html we are going to only learn how to create a control and how to do the ui then later we will going to learn how we can do a, all this kind of validation all these things then you got it this concept of um, linking in linking you want to link all these things to you this is the one example of a linking icon later we will uh, later we will learn like how to you and you want to link the uh, external library how we are going to link the html all these things we will learn later okay let me go add something <clears throat> when you are doing a project or you are doing something all the time suppose you want to display like this section first example this section you will write some comment for that this section for something 
So you want to write to do. Now in HTML, if you want to add a comment, comment means what? You can able to see that, but browser is not going to render that. Render means display. Suppose you want to write something here, but this data you don't want to display in the browser. We can call as a comment. In HTML, if you want to add a comment, you have to go less than exclamation symbol. Exclamation mark. Yeah, then four dot, then end, four hyphen. In between that, you have to add your text. Let me explain one thing. This is the you have to remember all these things less than exclamation symbol, two hyphen, whatever you want to add the comment, then two hyphen greater than symbol. If you add this one, save it. What will happen? This I what I return here, I return to do right. It's not displaying here. If I don't write anything and paste it here, and you can see able to see that to do is there, right. That is the use of comment because each and every programming contain a contain a, uh, like uh, this kind of commenting, right? If you want any kind of HTML commenting, then you have to use this less than this um, this less than and this exclamation all these things you have to use. Here the use of comment means this is used for comment. People note it all these things. That I will going to share the, all the um, notes, but as of now just remember all these things okay now now let's go for another one anyone knows svg anyone any idea about svg scalar vector graphics okay no so what is scalar, yeah what is scalar vector graphics means nowadays i have opened this one right just a second. I have opened this one. You can see there is a concept called SPG. What will happen if I open this one and if I increase the one, what will happening? You can see the image getting blur, right? Because if I change the any sizing or I can if I increase the uh, width or height of this image, it's getting blur. But nowadays, to solve this kind of problem, there is a concept called SBG scalar vector graphics scalar vector graphics or SBG is not going to change any kind of any kind of like uh, uh, the image quality you are going to use in small as well as large devices example nowadays you are not going to develop the application only for web you can also go to develop the application in web desktop uh, sorry web mobile tablet as well as a TV now what happening suppose you are going to use one of the icon or one of the images just imagine you are using this images in large screen the image this one should be increased right if it will going to increase the problem will be what problem will happen the image quality is going to be a little bit blur to solve this kind of problem there is a concept called SVG means in SVG if you increase or decrease the image then what will happen the the quality of the image is not going to be decreased like you can see it here <clears throat> this is Just a second, guys. Let me open. You can see actually what happening. Suppose you want to design an image. What happened the problem? Then you have to use the Photoshop or you have, you have to use the, uh, like any uh, Adobe Illustrator or you have to use all these things, right? But if you want to use any kind of SPG image, the SPG image writing the code, you can able to generate an image. Suppose this image is generating by a code. Let me show you how this image is generated by a code. If I open this one, I'll give an example of what is a SPG. You have to in your mind you have to know what is the use of SPG. Okay.
you can see that guys i have this image okay this is the image one of the like tractor or something i don't know roller if you open the image you can see how the images is created means this image is created using the code if you are going to write a code then you can able to use the image and this is the code okay? because I, I i am not going to in depth of all these things but what i'm trying to say it here if you want to create any kind of spg image using this kind of code you can able to create that means in the future if you want to create anything using because if you don't know photoshop or don't know adobe Illustrator or anything but using the code you can able to create any kind of image you can see all the images everything is created using the code only means using this kind of svg code right this is a totally different chapter i am not going to in depth into this but you have to understand that nowadays instead of using the png and all this kind of images now the people are using the svg images okay the svg images means it's not going to change the graphics quality if the screen is increasing or decreasing and svg images that is totally separate chapter for svg actually we are not going to cover in this but in spg you know how to create a circle how because if you see these images what you will see all are like different different kind of pixel right you are writing some draw, draw here and it's, it's a circle it's a between in another circle all these things are created right means combination of a circle square line all these things you are creating these images same way Using this code, in this code, you can see they have written all this kind of code. But where are you going to use the curve? Where are you going to use the circle, straight line, label, all these things. Combination of all these things, they are creating this kind of images. This is called a SPG. SPG stands for Scalar Vector Graphics. Okay. Clear? We are not going to cover all these things, but you have to know that what is a SPG. Nowadays, all are going to using this SPG in HTML. Okay. Anyone doubt in SPG because I did not explain anything, but you have to know the use of SPG. Okay. Is it a mandatory skill? No, 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 no. It's not mandatory. You have to know that SPG is there. But now the who who is going to create this SPG? You are just you are going to just use the SPG images. That's all. Nothing else. Just you have to okay. know that now people are going to use this kind of images instead of PNG, JPG, and other format. Now we have the this kind of um SVG images you just have to know that SPG how what is SPG okay so what are the uh, benefits of SPG sir instead of okay. PNG yes yes I'll, I'll tell you something I just expecting the same thing okay I'm opening one of the library you have to know that what is the use of okay this is called charges I mean charges means uh, using this library you can able sorry just a second sample means using this library you can able to create a uh, suppose you can able to create a chart it may be bar chart like whatever you already know the line chart all this chart right this chart is using two concept you either you can use the canvas otherwise you can use the svg means if you want to know how to plot all these things dynamically going to plot right dynamic going to generate right if you know the spg how it's going to the rounding all these things then you need the use of uh, spg you can achieve that one or if you want to create any kind of dynamic images dynamic images in your program in your code but not in html in dynamic images you want to create based on some requirement or anything that case you have to know the use of SVG means using the SVG the main difference between SVG and other images this is you have to draw okay but this is code means you can design the same one you can design the same one using the SVG means if you write the code they can able to generate an image but in case of image you have to draw this image using your any of the editor like adobe photoshop or you have to use the adobe illustrator or anything else or paint but if you want to design these kind of images in programmatically then you have to know the spg the difference between normal image and spg is spg is programmable 
where as normal image is non programmable got it clear right using the svg you can draw any kind of images but if you want to give basic images like png jpg all these things you have to draw the images but in svg you have to write the code to draw the images this is the two basic difference otherwise there is nothing you have to use okay let's go i'll explain another concept called canvas this is all a concept okay you have to know that the basic concept one i call like svg color vector graphics Another is canvas. Let me told what is canvas. Okay, today's class will be a little bit late. Means uh, we'll go for another five minutes. Canvas means as I explained it here. If you want to draw anything, okay, just imagine draw and paint. There is two concept, painting and drawing. If you want to do any kind of this kind of structure programmatically. Okay, if I open it, you can see that it's a canvas. You can see that it's a canvas. It's a canvas one. Canvas means already you people know that. Suppose someone of you support painter, then you know that you are using canvas, right? Canvas is used to paint something. The same way, if you are going to paint something in your HTML, then you have to use the canvas one. SVG is an image. Canvas is a painting means in canvas you can draw anything on real time. Okay, but whereas SPG you have to create a code that is going to generate an image. But canvas is used to paint an image means you have to do suppose you want to develop this kind of uh, library, right? All these things is written in canvas. You have to only use a canvas code, nothing else. The canvas, I am not going in depth into canvas, but you have to know that there is a basic of a canvas and SPG. SPG is a images, canvas is a drawing, like whatever you know the draw. This, is, this entire thing is developed using a canvas. A canvas is programmable, is accessed by, you can access the canvas using the JavaScript. Means if you want to draw anything like circle, or this line, all this thing, you have to use the JavaScript, okay? What I am trying to say to you here, like in, in HTML, you can also do the SVG image as well as the canvas one. How it's work? This is a totally different topic. But you have to know that in HTML, we can also support the SVG image as well as the canvas image. Okay? Clear? Then go to other things. Anyone in doubt today uh, on this on these things? Because this is totally a little bit higher, all these things, little, little technical. You have to know all these things. I am not going in, in depth into all these things because this is not, uh, we cannot cover all these things. But you have to know that SPG canvas, all are the features who, which are is used in HTML. Okay. Let me last one go for frame. Okay. What is frame? Let me discuss. Okay, guys, just stay with me. Uh, let one five more minutes. To complete today because uh, we have a lot to complete. Okay. Just an example, you have a website, and previously in website you want to display some of the section in different website. Means this is your website. Then this is your website. Inside the website, you want to display another website here. Means if you want to embed a different website in your website, then you have to use the concept of iframe. Iframe means it's a framing concept. You like internet frame. Iframe full form means internet frame. Using the iframe, you can embed any site to your website. Let's see how it's work. This is the last one. Okay. Let me create. I want to bind this uh, Google site inside my HTML. Okay. What I need to do it here? For adding anything here, you have to use the tag called iframe. A F R A M E. iframe start, iframe end. Okay. Then you have a <coughs> source. Like what are the URL you want to bind, right? For that you have to use SRC, SRC tag attribute. Then you have to pass the 
is satisfied. If I passing HTTP is www.google.com. Let me save it and all HTML. It's not opening. Just a second. Why it's not opening? Let me open this site also. Maybe Google disable this iframe. I'm going to explain all these things, but you have to know that. Okay. You can see that. Okay. Why Google is not opening? That I'm going to explain later, but you have to know that. In iframe, if I want to attach an external site inside this, then what I'll do? I'll use the SRC. SRC will be the SRC will be the path of the website or file you want to display inside the iframe. Suppose if you want to add the width and height, you can use suppose width equal to suppose 500 and height will be 500. refresh. You can see it is coming inside that. You got it right. What is the use of iframe? Nowadays, no one is using iframe, means it's it's actually no one going to use the iframe. But if you want to use, if you want to use any third party application, third party website you want to display inside your page, then you have to use the concept of iframe. Okay, this is the last one. Anyone any doubt in iframe? Okay, guys, I think today we are running out of time. Then tomorrow we are going to start with um, CSS, but in CSS from starting onward, we have to learn because in CSS there are vast uh, syntax is there. Means there are n number of syntax is present in CSS. But what I'm trying to say it here in CSS, we will go each and everything you have to understand each and every structure of a how the designing happening in a website means how the website designing work. Then we will learn after the completion of HTML, uh, CSS, we will learn go for the bootstrap and lastly we'll go for the JavaScript. Okay, tomorrow we will spend time to learn about the CSS and the basic concept of CSS, how the CSS work, what are the different, different type of syntax in CSS, all these things we have to learn. Okay.